Okay. Welcome to another film photo review. This time I'm going to just review a portrait that I did in September of 2021 called The Engineer. Uh, you can find more information about this on my website if you're interested in looking at some of the photos larger than maybe here on uh, YouTube or uh, you can just browse around my site there as well. The link is throughout the presentation. But before we get started, I want to tell you about some of my other videos. Uh, if you're new to watching some of my videos, I have these film photo reviews of uh, a skateboard park I went to, turning my bedroom into a camera obscura, and the Sandbridge Beach Houses uh, and also I did one on these coal piles that I took that kind of look like mountains in my area when it's snowy out. So if you're interested in those things, dive into YouTube at cedarbrew.com slash YT. Um, but for now, let's get started on The Engineer. This story starts before September 2021. Um, I met a person that lives near me here uh, in Pennsylvania through Flickr. Uh, because I was looking at photographs that were taken near where I live. And um, by doing that, I ended up finding this person on Flickr, reaching out to them and saying, oh, I like your photos. How did you get some of these photos? And then it turned out that this person actually lived in the home that Eliza and I own now um, when he was a kid. So, of course, that was sparked up a conversation that you find out somebody used to live in the house you live in. And... Um, yeah, you know, we, we got to talking and I found out that he is a train engineer, that he's been a train engineer for many decades and just a fascinating job. I think the 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 vital nature of a train engineer was very interesting to me. Um, no doubt there are less train engineers today than there were in the past, but just how important that job is to moving goods throughout the country and how important it is that they're on time and all of that was just very interesting to me. So I wanted to see more about his job on the job. And so he was very gracious and invited me to uh, take his portrait while he was at work. Um, so, yeah, it's it's super. I feel very privileged to have uh, done this photo project. And um, I've been rewarded a lot by doing it because uh, that's one of my goals is to do more environmental portraiture. And so I'm very thankful to uh, the engineer for letting me do that. Um, so here's the day that uh, the portrait happened. I drove about an hour from where I live to meet uh, him at a place that I would be able to spend some time with him. He knew that at this leg of his day, he'd be able to be in this area for about an hour or an hour and a half or something. And so um, I was able to spend some time with him there. I brought with me my phone, my uh, drone, and two film cameras, the Canon AE-1 and the Mamiya 645 Pro-TL. And so I shot some photos with, with each of those. Uh, beautiful day, you know, late summer, and uh, kind of like a, an ideal day for me, really, to be able to go up and shoot some portraits on such a beautiful day in such a unique type of situation. Here's me first taking the drone up. Here's the location that we were at. Uh, just beautiful to be next to the the river there. And this river, if you look up information on the Susquehanna River, uh, it did have Native American peoples living along the river at various stages throughout the river. And there's been a lot of artifacts found that proves that to be true. And so it's fascinating to think of the history of the river and how much water from our area gets moved down into the, into the Chesapeake Bay and out into the Atlantic Ocean. But I think about those kind of things all the time when I'm thinking about these, you know, imagine taking the train every day up and down this river as your job. 
Uh, I'm sure you can easily take it for granted when you're doing it, but I didn't this day. It was, it's just a beautiful day and amazing place to be. I was able to get on while they were moving these car, uh, the train cars. So they brought only two train cars full of material, and they dropped those off. Uh, but to be able to drop those off and pick up others, there's this dance that needs to happen to um, to move the cars into the correct order so that you can leave some behind, pick some up, you know, leave some behind at various stages throughout the journey and make sure that they're the right ones that are supposed to stay where they're supposed to go. And so that dance that they do with the conductor being the person that kind of orchestrates the whole thing and the engineer who's the person I photographed um, being the person that's driving the train um, it's a it's really so it's sophisticated I won't say it's it's probably not difficult for them now I mean when I'm watching them it's like watching someone that's really good at playing a video game do this um, you know without even looking they're able to to do to, to move this train the way that, you know, someone would move a Honda Civic. Like, <laughs> and yet it's this enormous, powerful machine and they have no trouble maneuvering it. But uh, this is the, you know, the, well, you know, the kind of like the captain of a ship. This is the, uh, the main area where everything happens. You know, like this engine is a, I believe it's a, electric diesel so you have a huge powerful diesel motor that generates electric to power the entire uh train hence all the high voltage signs that you see on almost every surface um yeah just quite an amazing machine it had no problem picking up i I don't know how many train cars they ended up with by the time they were finished but if it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a few dozen or something, and it had no problem moving those around like it, like they were nothing. Um, on the left hand side, you can see that the um, red. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. Hold on. Let me zoom in a little bit more. The red box on the left hand side says fuses and torpedoes. I didn't see this that day, so I don't know what Torpedoes is. I didn't look it up. I kind of like not knowing. <laughs> Just imagining that he has, you know, normal fuses that you would need for uh, a train of this size. I'm imagining that there's some fuses that could easily go, but let's have some Torpedoes, too. I like to think that he has the ability to torpedo something if he wanted to. Um, <laughs> again, just... I kind of scrambled down the hill at one point and, and took some photos of the river. Kind of a main artery of the area. I like this photograph. Um, it isn't the one that I chose to be the main photograph of this project, but um, I do like it. Uh, that If knowing... The engineer now, as well as I do, this is a good, uh, you know, he has that kind of happy, smirky kind of smirk going on. Um, it's not a frown for sure, but if you know him, you would know that he's a happy person and or seems like a happy person. And so it was, I thought, a good photo, but it wasn't the one I wanted to show because I wanted more of the environment in the photo. But I do like it. And quite frankly, when he's doing his job, he has to look back a lot to do his job. And so this view that you're seeing is him looking backwards over his own chair is definitely something that he does a lot of. And a few kind of at-work shots with the Canon, uh, the 35 mil, just to get some interesting shots of him doing what he does. He doesn't move much in this phase of what he's doing, but he is checking things out. He's making sure things are lining up. He's making sure that he's in the right spot. Um, I I know I asked him at the time what he was looking at out the window. I don't remember what the answer was, but it might have been a mark or something that he had to go to or something, but 
He was very good at driving this thing. If that's even the right word. The photo on the left, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this as well, but the photo on the left, I do like it. It's, I love the way his head is framed, which is the ultimately the image that I'm going to end up using, uh, not 35 millimeter, but with the Mamiya, um, is a similar photo to this because his head is framed with that window. But he was looking at something over my right shoulder at the time. Not sure if the conductor was walking back and forth or I don't remember, but I didn't know at the time until I got home. But it makes his eyes look like he's looking over my shoulder. And so um, it just didn't, other, other than his eyes, I think it's a great shot of him. Uh, so let's go back to here. Go to the next slide. So the conductor was really hustling. Uh, these guys do not dilly-dally when they're doing this job. I think it takes them all day. They want to get home, you know. Uh, and so I think this is, you know, whatever it is that they are scheduled to do is an all-day job, and they have a certain amount of time to, to complete it. And I don't think that there's time for them to just relax. They can probably relax when they're driving in between locations to a degree. Um but when they're on location and they have to move these cars and put them in the right spot and then ultimately deliver the goods or, or pull away the cars that they are supposed to pull away for the next day, um, they are not dilly-dallying. They're hustling. And the conductor is definitely hustling, uh, working at on uh, disconnecting and connecting all these cars in the right order. I'm going to show you on this photo. So this is ultimately the photo that is the shot of this project. And I'm very happy the way it came out. And like I said, his head is framed and it's environmental in the sense that you know where he is. You know, uh, you may not know this is a train with just by looking at it, but um, definitely him on the job. And I really like it. But that CB radio that he has in front of him, you know how you press a button on a CB so you can talk and then you let it go so someone else can talk. These guys had this so down and so they were so good at their jobs that they didn't even have to say what they wanted from each other. They had this shorthand. So if they if if the conductor wanted the engineer to move forward three pay, uh, three car lengths or whatever, you know, amount of space that he needed to move distance, um he could just click that button a couple times and they just knew how far things were. I mean, they were barely saying any words and yet they were able to do this work. It was quite something to see. Kind of like if you were to, you know, whistle at somebody. They're too far apart to whistle and there's too much noise from the engine and stuff. But if, if you were able to just whistle a specific whistle and they knew exactly what you wanted them to do as a result, that's kind of what they were doing. It was awesome. I do a video of that, but I didn't want to share it because... I wasn't sure if I should. Um, the slideshow didn't change. There it goes. My computer's being weird. Um, so, yeah, this... Let me zoom in for you here. Because this is the photo of the project. So this is taken on the Mamiya 645, so it's a medium format image on Kodak Tri-X, and, you know, it's really, really nice negative. I do have one thing on the negative. I'd like to show you guys what happened. I'm not sure what's happening. Um, but I'm having some either scratches in my emulsion for some reason, and... I do store these in sleeves, and I try to take as much care as I possibly can, so I'm not sure what could be doing it, but I'll show you in a minute what I mean. So this is... I'm not exactly sure when I printed this. Um, I could look it up, but I'm guessing it's probably a few months later that I made the first print of the engineer. Um... So this is me in my basement darkroom. 
getting suited up. Here are the negatives on the light box. Uh, some strong negatives, you know. I wish I took a lot more photos. Um, I my my biggest takeaway from this photo shoot is to take more photos. So here's the, the an eight by ten. Um, I knew I wanted to give him an eight by ten. You know, because most people don't want something bigger than that. You know, photographers do. We all want to print enormously. You know, um, but people like just like an eight by ten on their desk or something. You know, and so I did print these for him. And and again, this is probably still in either late 2021 or early 2022. That I printed these. I made several copies. One because I wanted my own. Another because I thought maybe I would be able to give it to somebody else, um, either a local organization or something. I wasn't sure. I think I still have it. And then, of course, one for him. I wanted to give him one. So here it is framed, and I, I... Probably ended up framing this in December of 2022. I'm recording this video in January 2023. So, you know, it took about, it took me 15 months to give him his print. <laughs> 15 or 16 months. I really like the way it turned out. It was a lot of fun. And the, just having the history of the railroad in our area the fact that he lived in my house when he was a kid, the fact that he still lives in the area, just everything kind of lined up where I'm really happy that I got to do this photo project. Let me zoom in. Um, yeah. A lot of fun. Okay, so my lesson from this particular film photo review is to take more photos. Uh, I like the photos that I got. If I took more and ended up with just these, I would have been fine with that as well. Um, I would not have been upset just having these photos. I'm, I think I got a, a fair number of photos that are fine. Uh, I just wish I took more. Um more of the train, more of maybe his hands on the controls, uh, maybe some of the conductor, because the conductor was super interesting. Um, I never talked to him before. I didn't ask him. He had nothing to do with this. So it felt kind of weird to just, like, march up to him and say, I'm going to take your photograph now because I'm here to take the photograph of the engineer. So um, it just didn't happen that way, but I, I kind of wish I did. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the section of the, at each, at the end of each of my videos, I like to showcase a couple of other photographers. Uh, I wish I had more to showcase than I do this time, but the next time I'll, I have more that I want to show. But uh, this is, uh, I'm not really featuring this photograph by this individual, but more this individual, John Zarkowski. Um, he was the director and or curator of the photography department in the Museum of Modern Art for a few decades. Um, super, super important person when it comes to kind of crafting the art of photography in the United States, certainly. And if you watch John Zarkowski's uh presentations. He's very witty, very funny guy, very well versed, very high vocabulary kind of person, um, has a very great way of describing photographs that make them very, make them important, you know, and that was kind of his job. But uh, I really like his style. I like his photographs. I have now uh, a few of his I think I have two of his books now. My wife found me one the other day, which I really like, and he wrote 
some essays around photography and they're just, they're fantastic, really. Um, to be a curator, the job is to really highlight the best of the work and not necessarily the best work, but the best of the work. And I think he did a phenomenal job with that. And so I urge you to, if you have never heard of him, definitely take a look at John Zarkowski, his photographs, and also his work for MoMA. And then uh, let's go into Craig Easton. Um, I just recently kind of came across him on Instagram, so I figured I'd kind of throw you a curveball here where you have one person is, you know, kind of seminal to photography as a whole, and then this person, I mean, I'm sure this, I'm sure Craig is accomplished. He's got some great images on, on Instagram, but he's kind of a wild card for me because I don't know too much about him, but I urge you to take a look at some of his work. It looks pretty nice. Okay, very good. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to go through this photo series with me. If you want to follow my blog or um, some of the content that I share on my site or through Mastodon, not so much Twitter anymore, even though you can follow me there as well. But if you go to cdvrew.com slash subscribe, uh, you can find all of my links to all the places that I share information. Thank you.